Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film named The Pope's Exorcist. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Father Amorth, the Vatican's exorcist, carrying his exorcism kit and entering a house surrounded by a crowd. At this moment, a man inside the house is possessed by a demon, constantly shouting in English, a language he did not know before. As Amorth appears, the boy's face contorts into a hideous expression, and he roars at Amorth, claiming to be a legion of demons led by Satan himself. Amorth dismisses the demon, saying it's shitty and not even worth a fart. The demon is taken aback by his humiliation and asks Amorth if he doubts its power. Amorth has his assistant bring in a wild pig, challenging the demon to possess it to prove its strength. The demon, seemingly convinced, leaves the man's body and transfers to the pig. However, Amorth's assistant shoots the pig dead, causing the demon to perish with it. Amorth successfully exercises the demon and leaves the man's house. This shows that Amorth has his unique approach to exorcism as the Vatican's number one exorcist. The scene ships to Castile, Spain, where a single mother named Julia takes her son and daughter to an abandoned monastery. Julia's husband died in a car accident a year ago, leaving behind the monastery. She plans to renovate it and sell it. However, she is unaware of the evil presence hidden within. One night, her son Henry becomes possessed by a demon, speaking nonsense and convulsing uncontrollably. Henry, who had witnessed his father's gruesome death a year ago and hadn't spoken since, suddenly starts talking, which frightens Julia. She doesn't realize her son is possessed, so she rushes him to the hospital for treatment. However, no issues are found after a series of tests. The doctor gives her a few sedatives to use when Henry hurts himself during an episode. Back at the monastery, Henry falls into a deep sleep. His sister named Amy wipes his head with a towel to cool him down. Suddenly, the power goes out in the monastery, plunging the room into darkness. Henry sits up emotionless, and Amy goes to restore power. Julia hears strange noises coming from Henry's room and rushes in. She embraces Henry, trying to comfort him, but he suddenly attacks her. Julia manages to break free, and as the possessed Henry lifts his shirt, the word hate is carved into his body. Then, Henry starts screaming nonstop in a chicken voice, asking Julia to find a priest. In a hurry, Julia invited a newbie priest to the monastery. Newbie reassured Julia that he would help her. After calming down, newbie pushed open the door to Henry's room, and a powerful force emerged from the room, knocking newbie out. Inside, Henry said it wasn't this priest. Seeing this situation, newbie had no choice but to seek help from his superiors. On the other hand, the Pope learned of the situation and called Amorth to his side. Henry's case made him feel uneasy, because Henry's possession progressed quickly, and the incident took place at the sacred site of San Sebastian Monastery. That place had caused a lot of trouble for the church in the past. The Pope could feel an evil aura coming from there. Therefore, he believed that only a morth could solve this problem. The Pope hoped that in addition to helping Henry exorcise the demon, a morth would also investigate what had happened there. After bidding farewell to the Pope, a morth rode his Tesla motorcycle and set off. After a long journey, he finally arrived at the monastery where Julia was. As soon as he entered the courtyard, Amorth felt something was unusual. In the courtyard, there was a dried-up well covered with steel plates, surrounded by overgrown weeds. Amorth began to sprinkle holy water on himself in the courtyard to ward off demonic invasions. At this moment, Nubi heard the noise and came out of the monastery. Upon seeing Amorth, Nubi became excited. It turned out that Amorth was regarded as a godlike figure among priests, and Nubi idolized him. Similarly, the church's decision to send him also indicated that the demon's power was extraordinary. With Nubi's introduction, Amorth met Julia. After understanding the situation, Amorth told Julia to relax as everything was under control. Then, he went upstairs to Henry's room and began to pray. Henry suddenly opened his eyes and told Amorth that his prayers were useless here. Seeing this, Amorth took out a priest's medal from the box and waved it back and forth in front of Henry's eyes. A demonic child appeared in Henry's pupils. Now Amorth confirmed that Henry was possessed by a demon. He asked who the demon was, and the demon said that he would be the end of Amorth. Amorth wanted to know the reason for possessing the child, and the demon said that he enjoyed destroying innocent bodies. But more than that, he preferred to challenge the souls of exorcists. Amorth asked what his purpose was, and the demon claimed to be looking for him. 
The demon also knew some of Amort's sins. Amort felt that he was just trying to scare him. He asked the demon to reveal something about himself, and Amorth was sure he couldn't say it. That's because the sins committed by Amorth had long been forgiven by God. However, the mention of God angered the demon. Amorth figured out that he was afraid of God and used this as a breakthrough. The demon stated that God was not here, but Amorth explained that God was everywhere and that anything could only be done with God's permission. In the meantime, the cross behind Amorth suddenly fell off. The demon smirked and said this was just the beginning, and Amorth didn't know who he was dealing with. Amorth wanted to ask the demon's name, as only by knowing the name could he have a chance to defeat him. However, this demon was not easily fooled like the demon that crawled into the wild pig's body at the beginning of the movie. The demon refused to talk about its name, but instead revealed Amorth's name and knew Amorth nightmare. This happened during World War II when Amorth enlisted to fight against the Nazis. During a search in a village, Amorth and his team were ambushed by German soldiers. All his teammates were annihilated, and Amorth survived by playing dead. This has been a lingering nightmare for Amorth. Just then, Henry's body reacted, and it seemed like something was in his throat. The next moment, a dead bird was spat out of Henry's mouth. Amorth was startled by the scene, and went to find Nubi to ask if he had mentioned his name to Julia and the demon. Newbie shook his head, after all, he didn't know beforehand who the church would send here for the exorcism. Amorth needed Newbie's help, and asked about his understanding of demons. Newbie could only stammer a little knowledge. Realizing he couldn't rely on Newbie, Amorth turned to Julia to find out why the demon chose Henry. Amorth learned from Julia that her son had witnessed his father's death, and that memory was his nightmare. Perhaps the demon seized this opportunity to possess Henry's body. When a person has a secret in their heart, the demon will use it as a breakthrough. While Amorth and Julia were talking, Amy heard a noise coming from her brother's room. She ran over to check, but was frightened out of the room by the demon. The phone at the monastery rang, and Amy shakily picked it up. The voice on the other end was that of her father. Before she could react, the demon's voice suddenly came through. Amy hung up and rushed into her mother's room. Amorth realized that he needed to perform the exorcism as soon as possible. To exorcise the demon, Amorth had to find out its name. Before getting the name, Amorth and Nubi could only pray. Some demons couldn't bear the pain of prayer and chose to leave voluntarily. Before praying, Amorth asked Nubi to repent to God for his past sins and receive forgiveness before praying. If not forgiven, the demon could smell Nubi's sins and use them as a breakthrough to attack him. Once everything was ready, Amorth took Nubi into Henry's room and prayed continuously. As expected, the demon reacted, and its body began to twist. Suddenly, the lights in the room went out. Amorth picked up a lighter to check and found the demon took the appearance of a woman. Amorth kept warning the demon that he had received God's forgiveness, but the woman stated that Amorth could not forgive himself. It turned out the woman was Rosaria. A few months ago, Amorth had tried to exorcise the woman. When he arrived at her house, Amorth found out that Rosaria was not possessed by a demon, but merely had a mental illness. So, Amorth chose to leave without performing an exorcism on her. However, just as Amorth walked out of the house, she died right in front of him, and Amorth felt much guilt for her death. Just then, Amorth realized that he was forced into witnessing his guilt. After he snapped out of it, the demon targeted Nubi and mentioned an incident in the past when Nubi had an affair with a prostitute during his preaching. The demon's words angered Nubi, who grabbed the demon's neck in rage. This move played right into the demon's hands. Fortunately, Amorth quickly pulled Nubi out of the room. Amorth explained to Nubi that the demon could sense their guilt and use it against them to distract them. Given the current situation, Amorth and Nubi could no longer continue praying. They had to find out the demon's name to have a chance of defeating it. Amorth suddenly remembered the demon had told him he had been fooled. He then realized that the demon had a bigger plan than just possessing the child. Amorth recalled the dry well he had seen in the garden and decided to investigate it. He went to the courtyard and found that the cover of the well had the seal of the Vatican. Remembering that the Pope had mentioned that this place had once caused problems for the church, Amorth was certain that there was something wrong beneath the cover. He tied a rope to the cover and the other end to a motorcycle, revving it up to pull the cover off. As the cover fell, a strange scene unfolded. The crucifix in Julia's room automatically turned around, and a large hand began to touch her sexy body. Sensing something was wrong, Julia cried for help. Suddenly, her bed split in half, forming a crack. 
The large hand tried to drag Julia down. A morph heard the commotion, rushed over, and pulled Julia back from the edge of death. Meanwhile, Amy encountered something bizarre. A mysterious force flipped her off the bed and onto the floor, frightening her into hiding in the storage room. The demon followed her, but Amorth arrived just in time to recite a spell and drive the demon away. Amorth realized that they could no longer stay in the monastery. He asked Nubi to take everyone to the church for protection. After selling everything, Amorth and Nubi went to the dried well. Through the symbols inside the well, they recognized the insignia of the Spanish Inquisition. That era was one of the darkest periods in Christian history, when countless Christians were condemned and killed by the Inquisition for various reasons. The skulls on both sides of the well belonged to the executed Christians. Amor felt that something beneath this place was hiding a secret. He then found the passage to the well and broke open the wall, revealing a door. Together, they pushed the door down and entered an underground tomb. In the center of the tomb lay a corpse. Through the ring on the deceased hand, Amorth deduced that the dead person was the guardian of the archbishop. His death indicated that a fierce battle had taken place here, which ended in failure. Amorth found a key on the body and continued to delve deeper. Inside, they discovered the corpse of one of the greatest exorcists in history. Amorth found a diary on the body, which chronicled a great battle against a powerful demon. This demon could possess priests and multiple people simultaneously, using the identity of the Inquisition to persecute Christians for centuries. Surprisingly among them, their greatest exorcist was also one of the possessed priests. The Vatican learned about this, and to avoid chaos, they covered up the matter and buried the truth here. The demon was also imprisoned in this place. It was highly likely that the demon was set free accidentally by a construction team during their work. Subsequently, Amorth found a map in the diary, marking hundreds of locations where those terrifying demons were imprisoned. As things developed, Amorth realized that the current demon planned to possess him to infiltrate the church in order to rescue its fellow demons and form a demonic legion to destroy the church completely. Meanwhile, Julia woke up in the church and found her daughter missing. She heard her daughter's voice coming from the monastery, so she took a tranquilizer, entering Henry's room. At that moment, Amy was sitting beside her brother, giggling incessantly. Julia called Amy over, but she claimed she was possessed. Julia tried to save her daughter by pulling her away, but Henry suddenly attacked. Julia was thrown across the room, and he began to choke her from a distance. Just as Julia was about to suffocate, Amor found the demon's name in the diary, the Prince of Demons and Hell, Asmodeus. The moment he uttered the name, the demon's strength significantly weakened, causing Julia to fall from the air, and Amy to regain her senses. Julia told Amy to pick up the tranquilizer and inject it into Henry's body to temporarily control him. Finally, they tied up Henry. Armed with the demon's name, Amorth and Nubi confessed their sins to God once more to prevent the demon from exploiting any weaknesses during the upcoming battle. After all was done, he led Nubi and the others into Henry's room. The drug's effects had worn off, and the demon sat up once more, roaring at Amorth like a goose. The demon told Amorth it knew what he wanted, but Amorth remained unfazed and continued reciting the exorcism. The next moment, Amorth experienced an illusion, the dead woman Rosaria hanging upside down from the ceiling. Amorth remained unfazed, reminding himself that she wasn't real. The demon was unable to break through Amorth's defenses, so it shifted its focus to Nubi, it took on the appearance of a prostitute and tried to seduce Nubi, who struggled to resist her hormones. Amorth intervened just in time, restoring Nubi's sanity. Together, they held up their crucifixes and recited the exorcism spell. Under the spell's influence, the demon possessing Henry went from arrogant to calm, to the point that Henry's mind regained control of his body. Amorth then instructed Julia to call out to her loved son continuously, helping him recover. They thought the exorcism was successful, but when Amorth checked Henry's condition and lifted his shirt, he saw a chilling message. God is not here. Just then, Amorth understood that the demon had switched hosts. In the next moment, Amy's body contorted, and she climbed onto the ceiling, launching an attack on everyone. Under the demon's powerful assault, the three of them were no match. To save everyone, Amorth could only rely on his last resort, allowing the demon to possess his soul. And so, the demon occupied Amort's body, leaving the others alone. Nubi urgently awakened Julia, telling her to take the children and leave. Before his mind was completely consumed by the demon, Amorth contemplated ending his own life together with the demon. 
But the demon wouldn't give him that chance, as it planned to manipulate Amorth into overthrowing the Vatican. As time passed, the demon completely took over Amorth's soul and controlled him, leading him to the dried-up well to open the gates of hell, planning to set free a demon army. Suddenly, Nubi appeared, reciting the exorcism spell repeatedly. In a brutal faction, the demon was expelled out of Amorth's body. Seeing that it couldn't possess Amorth, the demon sought to destroy him, summoning a prostitute to attack Nubi while it dealt with Amorth. In the nick of time, Nubi pulled out a medal, aiming it at the prostitute's forehead and successfully vanquishing her without hormone mercy. Amorth then used a crucifix to repel the demon and banished it back to hell. Amorth and Nubi joined forces in prayer, preventing the demon from crawling back out and closing the gates of hell. All returned to calm. After vanquishing the demon, Amorth and Nubi met the Pope later. Upon explaining the situation, the Pope instructed them to eliminate the other demons recorded in Ancient Exorcist's diary. Despite the tasks being challenging, they still accepted it and embarked on their new adventure. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.